Chapter 12 The Monk's Well at Tyrim They ran through the thickets, through the brushwood, over the moors and across the glades. The full moon, with its silver glance, and the owls of all kinds, followed the two wild creatures in their furious chase. The night birds hooted with terror beneath the branches as they passed, and far away, in the hamlet in the glade, the peasants said to each other anxiously, What's going on in the depths of the forest to make all the birds cry tonight with the ring of death in their voices? And then a howl rang out, baleful, terrible and interminable, a howl that curdled the blood of the bravest. It's a wolf, said the peasants. The moon has driven him mad. Let us keep our dogs close and pray to God. They ran across the plain, jumping over hedges and ditches, crossing the enclosures and the garths. In their stables, the oxen pulled on their chains and lowed. The ewes in the sheepfold crowded round the lambs. To the death! To the death! howled the wolf. Renard fled as fast as he could. Which would win, frenzy or fear? Renard fled. Eastgrim pursued him, bearing down on him with tireless legs that gained new energy from every spore. But the fox was as light as air now. He flew along like St. Elmo's fire, still jumping over the hedges and fences, seeing them pass below him, seeking lines of shadow where he could hide, ditches where he could bury himself. But whatever he did, Eastgrim was at his heels. He could hear the galloping feet, the hoarse breath, the rattling teeth, and all the time he ran and ran, his heart beating like mad, his throat so taut he was ready to faint, as though the wolf's teeth had already sunk into it all at once. To the death! To the death, howled the wolf. They passed over the arched bridge. They slid and slithered over the meadows flooded by the river. Although they never stopped running, they went up again to the festival cross and came down once more over the plain. Renard dashed down the great drive to Tyrann. Eastgrim dashed after him. They turned and twisted round the elm trees and over the soft grass. They ran round the abbey walls and round the pond with the eels. When he saw it, Eastgrim's fury gave him renewed energy and spurred him on. He growled. Now only the moon could see them, as its blue light shone from roof to roof. Still the long, high, light-coloured wall. And suddenly, Renard saw a round opening in the angle of a step in the wall, which made the top lower. He jumped in a wild, desperate leap. His paws scraped the mortar, but he went over. At the foot of the wall, he rolled over hard, got up, sighed from the depths of his entrails. He was through. He was saved. But on the other side, he could hear East Green making ready. He jumped, beating the air in his flight, passed over and came down beside him. To the death! To the death! Run, fox, if you still can, with your torn feet, your trembling, shuddering feet, if they can still bring you any succour and safety. If your heart, which has beaten so fast, can still pump the blood through your veins. He was about to weaken, but at the same moment he started to run again. He felt that death was upon him. Death would come to him in this Tyrann courtyard, shining blue in the moonlight. It would come at the rim of the well that was near him, this cold well. No, not now. The wolf ran round the yard alone, raising his huge muzzle, his tail beating against his sides. Where? Where could Renard have gone? He was there. Eastgrim had got him. He was there no longer. He ought to be there still. But where on earth could Renard have gone? The wolf was panting. His tongue was hanging out. How thirsty he felt suddenly, the big grey wolf. Was it the coolness of the well that attracted him? A mist rose from it in the moonlight and forced him to raise his paws and place them on the rim. He leant over. To the death! To the death! He roared at the rim of the well. His fury blazed up again and consumed him. At the bottom of the shaft gleamed a pool of water in which shone the face of the moon. Renard was there, as motionless as a shadow. But it was he, the moon betrayed him, and near him, touching his shoulder, stroking him with her long muzzle, looking almost as large as Eastgrim. The wolf mistook his own reflection for Ursa, the she-wolf, and he growled at her and the fox. Ursa! Faithless, you horrible reptile! 
His voice rang out with a cavernous echo down the deep stone well. With his neck outstretched and his spine taut, he swore and threatened. I'll kill you! Yes, both of you! You, Ursa, and you, Renard! His voice choked in strident staccato cries. It struck the surface of the water, glanced off it, rose again and came back into his face. They were laughing down there, ridiculing his revengeful anger, the impudent creatures, but surely they would have to come out. You'll come out! I'll kill you, Renard! 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 sang out a distant voice. It was very distant indeed. Eastgrim shuddered. Who was speaking? Was it the cool mouth of the water? Where could this strange, slow-speaking voice come from? From the other side of the earth? Then the well spoke again. Who is calling me? I, Eastgrim. Is that you, Eastgrim of Galarand, whom I loved so much when I was on earth? Yes, it is I, treacherous, wicked Redcoat. Come up, so that I can break your neck. I am in a place which no one ever leaves. I could not, even if I wanted to. What's this tale? What's this new trickery? Come up, Renard, and your paramour as well, so that I can have my revenge and kill you both. If the wolf does not kill from revenge, the fox will not ask for mercy. Kiamutus e sanctus, tu quacoque iscli in nomine patris, into the bargain. The wolf leaned further and further over the rim. His eyes no longer saw clearly. The pool of water trembled below. Ripples moved across it. Fantastic shadows obscured Renard. And yet Renard was still there, still crouching at the bottom of the well with his accomplice, Ursa. This was another of his tricks. I told you that I've understood everything. Everything, Renard. The wolf has been deceived enough. Renard is dead, the voice went on. Deception? What can that be? I know only tree flowers and blindos and trickets and Eglianti's water in Renard's paradise. What are chickens and young hares compared to them, or the pure water of the springs in the woods? You must jump into the bucket. What? muttered he scream again. He was losing his head. He tried to understand. Could Renard really be dead? And what were these delights sung to him in this strange, melodious and supernatural voice? At the rim of the well was a wooden bucket with a rope attached. The rope was wound round a winch and was unwound on the other side to go down the deep well to the water. Foolish is he who does not jump into the bucket. Put two paws into it and pull the rope with the others. Adresin Eatarman. Aren't you going to jump in, you fool? That was Renard all right. The wolf was reassured and found his pride again. Very well then, he thought. I'll go to him. If he has told the truth, if he is really dead and in a state of bliss, I too will have my share of these wonders, these blindos and trickets, which are better than hens and young hares. If, on the other hand, he has lied and deceived me, I shan't be able to break his neck by standing here forever. He climbed onto the rim, placed his hind legs in the bucket, caught hold of the rope between his front paws, and immediately he swung down the well. The winch creaked, the rope unwound. He plunged down, much more heavily than Renard, who, in the other bucket, came up at the same time. The moon had moved round the sky. It was darker than on Advent night. As Eastgrim went down, something brushed against him in the darkness, with an odour, warmth and breath. He looked up, and he could see the summer sky, the shadow of the bucket moving to the top, and in the bucket... Renard! Renard! The wolf's cry rang out through the night. Renard! 
Renard! It rang out over the plain and was heard as far as the hamlet. But behind the walls of Tyran, the Carmelite monks, who had dined well on beans, did not wake for so little. Renard reached the top of the well, brought his two feet together and jumped lightly into the yard. Goodbye, uncle.